Ladies and gentlemen, many of the big healer content creators and streamers switch to an add-on called Cell for their healer party frames. I decided to give it a try myself and I fell in love pretty quickly because it was very easy to configure. It has a lot of options that allow you to tweak things to your liking, but it's also working quite well just straight out of the box with the default options and settings. So in this video I'm gonna guide you to starting from scratch with your healer frames and building them up with Cell to your liking to suit your UI the best possible way. The very first thing that you need to do after you install the add-on is open the options. You're gonna notice that there is no button added to the minimap, at least there wasn't one for me, so you have to type a command in chat. The command to type is slash cell options or slash cell opt, which opens this menu and you can also type slash cell to see all the available commands. Now once you're in the menu, the very first thing that you want to do is go to the layouts. Over here you can select which layout you're going to be working with and we're going to press the new button over here and we're going to create a new one, I'm going to call it new healer. Once you create the layout, the very first thing that you want to do is select it up here and in order to see how the changes are affected, you can go to the right hand side and here you can assign different profiles to the different scenarios. If you're solo, if you're in a party, if you're in a raid and so forth. So for now I'm gonna pick up solo and I'm gonna select the new layout and I'm also going to do that for the party as we're going to see a little bit later, we're gonna go into a dungeon and see how that looks there as well. So I want this one to be the applied. Now, as you can see over here, I can already see uh, the party icon and I can move it by clicking on this little uh, rectangle over here and dragging it along. The first thing that I'm going to change are some of the width and the height components over here. I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger, just like that so that the bars are not so small. One of the very cool features is the preview tab over here, which is off right now, but I can click it to be either preview the party or preview the whole raid. So let's stick with party right now so I can see all the frames like this. And as you can see right now, they're in a vertical position. I can change that orientation from here by clicking horizontal, which is what I'm going to do. But of course, if you prefer vertical, you can leave it as that. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the unit spacing X and Y to zero so that there's no space between the different uh, party members. And then you can also change the bar orientation. Right now the bars are going to feel from left to right, but if you want, you can actually put them uh, to be bottom to top by changing this to vertical A or vertical B. The other thing that you can do, uh, I'm going to turn off the preview for a second here, is you can control the size of the power bar, which in the case of a healer is going to be a mana, but you can see other resources as well by just dragging the slider over here. If you drag it to zero, you're not going to see those at all. And if you drag it to, let's say, one or two, you can see very small mana bar at the bottom. While we are here, I'm going to recommend something else. Go to the pet tab over here and just make sure that those are not selected because you're going to get an extra frame for the pet below the person or next to the person if you don't turn this off. So unless you really want to do that, you probably want to turn those off. All right, I'm going to go to preview party now and I'm going to drag this uh, where I wanted it to be on my screen according to the rest of the UI that I have. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Indicators tab. Over here, you can see everything that you're going to have on every person's frame, including their name, icons, etc. So for a start, you can go through all of these. As you can see, some of them are not selected. So for example, the health text is disabled, but if you want to see the percentages, you can just uh, enable this. So you have this number on your bars. For a start, I would recommend to do several things. First, you can go to the row icon and turn this off. Unless you really want to see who's the tank, who's the healer, most of the time I don't care about this, so uh, I don't want to have this extra space taken on my frames. I'm also going to turn off the leader icon, which uh, is basically going to show you who's the party leader. 
And there's one more cool thing that you can do. Right now, uh, let's drag this a little bit to the left. Uh, right now, this uh, preview window is the same size as my frame, but there's a scale here, so you can drag this to make this bigger. This is going to help you align things a little bit better and make the preview easier to understand, and then uh, you can go back to the original size. Also, this uh, cool little button here, show all, if you select this, this is going to show every single indicator from the left to the right-hand side, which could be very useful if you want to see how a stacked bar is going to look like. But for now, I'm going to turn this off and we're going to check it back later. All right, the next uh, two things that I'm going to pay attention to are the aggro uh, indicators. So first one is aggro blink. So if somebody has aggro on any mob, there's going to be the square blinking. Now, I like to have this on because if somebody pulls aggro for whatever reason, you're going to know that they're in danger. But unfortunately, there's no way to uh, exclude this for the tank only. So if you leave this on, you're going to see when somebody pulls aggro, but you're also going to have this blinking on your tank the whole time. So it's up to you whether or not you want to have it on. I'm going to disable the aggro bar, which is this little indicator here, which is another way to know if somebody has aggro. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to AOE healing and disable that as well. This basically blinks on top of your bar every time somebody's healed, but you don't really want to know this. So uh, that's too much information for me. And then scrolling down, you have external cooldowns, which is uh, when somebody casts, let's say, a pain sub on you or blessing of protection. And then you have defensive cooldowns, which are the personals for that respective person. As you can see, they're on separate indicators, but if you want, you can disable these and have them combined at the same place and shown on the same site. I prefer to keep those separate. And the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, first, there's some built-in spells. Uh, I'll show you how you can add or delete some of them later. Uh, but the very first thing that I want to do is go down here and change the width and the height because I kind of want this to be squares. I don't want them to be those uh, weird squished uh, um, icons. And then you see those little this little line that goes down showing how much time you have left for this. Uh, I just turned this off. I find it very annoying. It kind of obstructs the vision, especially if the icons are small. So you can turn this off by just clicking show animation. And then if you want to see how much time you have remaining for those buffs, you can go to this menu here, which is the show duration text. You can put it to always and always see how much time you have left. Or you can just select a threshold and only see the cooldown remaining after it's less than certain percentage or amount of seconds. I found this to be much more useful than the show animation option. The next thing to do is scroll down a little bit. The orientation is going to be stacking this from right to left. And because I have them on the right side of my bars, I'm going to keep this the same way. As you can see, by default, those are anchored to the right side of the bar. I can probably anchor them, let's say, to the top right. I'm going to change both of this to top right, and they're going to move over there. The other thing that you can do is you can play with these offsets. So right now, they're pushed two pixels to the right and five pixels uh, upwards, but you can, let's say, drag this down a little bit, and they're going to move respectively. So you can position them exactly where you want them to be. You can do the same for the defensive cooldowns. Uh, I'm going to make those uh, squares. And then I'm going to turn the animation off and I can show the duration as always and probably move them as well. This time the orientation is left to right because they're on the left hand side of my bar. So I want them to stack to the right and I'm going to put this offset to zero so they're not outside of the bar initially. Another very cool feature is the tank active mitigation. This is a small bar that basically shows you every time the tank pops defensives and you can see all the defensives that are being tracked up here scrolling. So shield of righteousness for the paladin, shield block for the warrior, etc. Now, what you can do here is uh, you can make this bar a little bit bigger, something like this. Um, and of course you can uh, make it even higher. What I want to do is I actually push this on top of my frame. So I'm going to put the offset here to be the same as the height so that it's not on top of the health bar. And you can also do the offset here to be zero. Uh, so it's starting from the start. 
Of course, you can turn this off, but I found this relatively useful because you don't need an extra weak aura to, to track your tank's defensives. Alright, I'm gonna come back to these indicators in just a second, but now let's go to the healer stuff. The first thing that you want to do is type slash sell healers into your chat. And as you can see, a small window pops up and says, do you want to create this by default? I'm going to click yes. And as you can see, this automatically pops up for me. I think you're prompted automatically the very first time you uh, open the options to have this created. But if you miss it, you can just type sell healers to create it manually. As you can see, this is by default icons for every single healing icon available for all the healers. And over here we have cast by me. Of course, you want to track your own only on the frames. If you want to delete something, you can just click on the X here and it's going to go off. And this is a priority list, which means that these are shown in order. You can move them around using the arrows over here if you want to change the ordering. And of course, you can even delete the ones that are not for your class if you decide that you don't need them or you don't play specific classes. Now, the very first thing that I'm going to do again, I'm going to put show duration to always or let's say if it's less than 10 seconds here and I'm going to hide the animation because I don't like this bar. The next thing that I'm going to do is uh, let's make those just a tiny bit bigger. That's too much. Uh, let's do something like 16. And I'm going to uh, put them in the bottom left. So I'm going to select both anchors to unit and to anchor point both bottom left. And I'm going to do the offsets to be zero. So they're connected to the bottom of my frames. All right, just to show you how this works, uh, I'm going to close the options over here. You can see the bar. If I cast Riptide and Earth Shield on myself, you can see the little icons popping up with stacks and everything. And once the Riptide has less than 10 seconds remaining, the cooldown appears on there as well. All right, back to the options. As I said, you can uh, delete and add to that list. And one thing you're going to notice if you click the little icon down here, which is the plus icon, is that if you want to add something, you need the spell ID. You cannot just type the name of the spell over here. This could be a little bit tricky because one option is to just find that spell in WoW Hat and just copy the ID from there. But you might find an old version of the spell that has a different ID, which is going to successfully add it to this list, but then it's not going to work and it's not going to show on your bars. So the better solution that I can give you is install an add-on called ID Tip, which is just going to add the spell ID when you have the tooltip and you hover over the icon. For example, I have it installed already, and if I hover over my Tidebringer buff, you see the spell ID over here, which says 236.502. So let's say you want to add this to the list. I'm just going to copy those numbers down here. As you can see, it shows up in the list, and if I click Enter, it's now over here. And as you can see, it's actually visible on the bar as well. However, this is a personal buff, it's not a healing spell, so I would actually want to track this separately in a custom way. So for now, I'm gonna delete it from here and I'm going to create a custom indicator. You can do that from down here, there's a button called create. I'm gonna call it personal buffs. It's gonna be icons, there's different options that you can pick from here. I'm going to select an icon, I'm going to select buff from here, I'm going to click yes, and I get to this option here. Obviously, I'm going to select uh, cast by me, I'm going to click show animation off, and then from the buff list, this is where I'm going to add the Tidebringer. So again, I'm going to copy this over, I'm going to press enter, and as you can see, this is now present. Another thing that I would like to track, for example, is my Ancestral Vigor. So I'm going to cast a spell myself. I'm going to see the ID, which is 207400, and I'm going to add this as well. Press Enter, and now I'm tracking two things. Now, let's make these icons a little bit bigger, and then I'm also going to anchor them to the bottom right, so I know that those are my personal buffs. So as you can see, Tidebringer is here now. If I heal myself, there is the Ancestral Vigor as well. And this way you can keep adding and creating custom debuffs the way you want them to be and place them respectively on your frames. 
Another thing that I want to show you is uh, something that's a little bit more specific to Raid, but let's say I want to have a glow around the frame of a person who has a Riptide ticking on them. So I'm going to select Create. I'm going to select uh, from here, I'm going to select Glow, still leave it and buff, and I'm going to call it Riptide Glow. I'm going to click Yes here. And now what I'm going to do here, as you can see, we already have a preview, but I'm going to increase the lines, I'm going to increase the frequency, and I'm going to increase the length. So basically this becomes a straight line now and not a ticking glowing debuff. Gonna change the color to uh, green, because I like it this way. And in the buff list, I need to just put the Riptide over here. So I'm gonna cast the Riptide on myself. I'm gonna see the ID of 61 to 95. So I'm going to add this over here, pressing enter. And as you can see, the frame now glows. One thing I would recommend is uncheck this button, which is checked by default, fade over time, so that the frame doesn't become obsolete as time passes. And as you can see, I'm going to reduce the thickness to one here. But now the frame with the person with the Riptide glows. Of course, you can use that technique to do different colors, different glows, and of course, connect them to different spells. All right, let's go back to the indicators now and click on the spells. The very first thing that I would recommend here is make sure this is checked. Only display this if the debuff is dispellable by you. You don't want to see all the debuffs that are not dispelled by you. So this is very useful checkbox. The next thing to check is this drop down menu here, which is how the bar is going to be colored if there is something to dispel. By default, you, get, you have this gradients, which I don't really like. So what I'm going to select is solid health bar, which is going to color the whole bar differently if there is a debuff to the spell. And now comes the natural question. How can you change those colors? Well, in order to do that, you have to go to appearance over here and scroll all the way down. Now, there's a different color that you can select for curses, diseases, magic, poison, and bleed. I prefer to have them the same color, but if you like, you can just click on one of those boxes and let's say you want to make the poison green, you can just change the color, confirm, and now the poison is going to color in green once that effect is present on that person. So if we go back to indicator, you can see it's changing the different uh, colors right now. They're all the same, but once it gets to green, you see that the color is different. Of course, you can play around with the other options uh, here and see how, let's say, the gradients look, but those are just not standing out enough for me. The other thing that you can do is, as you can see, there is the icon of the respective debuff shown. You can actually move that. Right now, it's bottom right. Let's say I'm going to put it into the top. So now the icon is dispelled there. And of course, you can use the offsets to move it a little bit. So maybe let's put it uh, somewhere here. If you prefer not to have the icon, you can just turn it off by unchecking this box over here and have the color be the only indicator that there is something to the spell. The next uh, very important indicator is the debuffs. And by default, this is going to show everything that is present on a certain person. So all kinds of uh, dots, damage, debuffs, all of this is going to be there. And of course, there is a blacklist because, for example, let's say you don't want to see when somebody is sated from Bloodlust and that's going to stay on your frames for 10 minutes. This list is populated for you by default. And of course, you can keep adding to it by just pressing the plus button here and adding the spell IDs. The first thing that I'm going to do again, I'm going to turn off the show animation because this is annoying. And I'm going to anchor this to the top right because this is where I want to see my debuffs. There we go. I'm going to put the offsets to zero so it's not outside of the bar. I'm going to change this to right to left because right now it's on the other side of the bar. And the most important thing here is what if there is a debuff that keeps popping up and you don't want to track it? As you can see, there's an option here which is called blacklist. And this is basically a key bind that you can use to remove this debuff and actually add it to the blacklist above. In order for this to work, you have to select this checkbox and then you can change this as well, but out control and right click uh, seems uh, fine. But keep in mind that if you do this, the icons are not going to be clicked too. So if you click on an icon to heal somebody, it's not going to work. So use this with care 
you can turn it off in, let's say, the beginning while you're still adjusting and there's many things that you want to blacklist. But then later on, you probably just want to uncheck this box and keep it this way. I would say by default, the blacklist is uh, pretty good. And of course, if something pops up, you can always add it manually to here as well. Before we move on, I would say two more things. You can go into appearance and from texture, you can change the way that your bars actually look like. I prefer to use this clean one, but there are a lot of options here. As you can see, once I change them, everything changes in here as well. There's different colors that you can use, different setups. Uh, just look through them and pick the one that suits you best. The other thing that's very specific for M plus is how the group is actually arranged. So uh, what I like to do here is click sort by row and here you can drag those little icons. So your tank is always going to be first. I prefer myself to be uh, at the, the end. So I'm going to drag the healer icon to be the last and the DPS is going to be the, in the middle. But of course, you can change this in any way you want and you can even hide yourself. You have some different kind of party frame so you can use that instead. All right, the next very important part is over here. It's called click casting and here you can add key binds and mouse over macros to actually use when you play on top of your frames. The way this works is you click on new, you get this uh, middle button, which allows you to select between general, which is the target, the menu, the focus, etc. You can use a spell and you have a drop down here with some of the spells that you can use, but if something is missing, you can just press edit and enter the ID of the spell as well. And you can also do a macro and select from a list. For example, you can bind it to your trinkets, uh, wrist extraction button, or you can just type the name of your macro over here and bind it to a specific button. So let's say I want to bind my chain here, which is bound already, but uh, I'm just going to select it from the list nevertheless. And then once you press here on the left hand side, it allows you to do a key bind. So let's say I want to bound it to scroll down on my mouse wheel, which is something that this allows you to do. So all of that, of course, is pretty cool. And you can also check that drop down over here, which is smart resurrection. I like to set this to normal. It's disabled by default, which means that if somebody is dead and you click on them out of combat, it's going to start resurrecting them automatically without you having to press the respective skill. You can also do that for the combat dress as well, but I prefer to do this manually and have control over it because I don't want to accidentally click on top of somebody and battle res them when I didn't want to do that. So the suggestion here is keep this on normal so you can automatically rest outside of combat. Last but not least, let's talk about rates. I'm going to go to layouts and create a new layout. I'm going to call it new raid. I'm going to click yes. And now I can assign on the side, let's say raid outdoor. I can click new raid, uh, raid instance. I can click new raid, right? So I can assign this to be the specific layout that I'm going to be using in those situations. Now, what you see here on the screen is still the old layout because right now we're not in a rate, we're in a solo and we're seeing the respective layout. What I'm going to do just temporarily, I'm going to switch to new raid so I can actually see that new layout. And as you can see, it looks pretty differently. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to click the rate review over here. Maybe make this a little bit wider, um, the height seems to be fine and I'm going to drag this down here where I'd like it to be when the rate is actually active. All right, adjust this a little bit more, something like that. And then I'm going to uh, reduce the spacing over here to zero because I don't like the space between the different frames. And the next cool feature, in order not to do everything we've done so far, I'm going to go to indicators. I'm going to select the new rate layout here and the thing that I'm going to do next is there is a little button here that says copy. So I'm going to press this and I'm going to copy everything that I created from the previous profile into this new one. So I don't have to do it again. I'm going to press the button. Oh, I'm going to press copy and everything with all the adjustments 
all the extra custom indicators is now present here. All right, so far so good. I'm going to remove the personal buffs uh, altogether from the delete button because I don't want to track those in rate. And then you can go through all of these and adjust them based on what you want to do in the raid because things there, of course, are a little bit different. For example, the very first thing that I'm going to do is even if you have this in M+, you definitely don't want to see that icon in raid, so I'm going to disable this. I also don't want to see the tank active mitigation in raid. They're on your own there. And of course, you can adjust all the other indicators, move them, make them bigger, make them smaller, etc. Whatever floats your boat. There is one indicator we haven't talked about yet, and this is the raid debuff. This is very similar to debuffs, but it works a little bit differently. First, as you can see, you can position it in a different place. You can have the number of icons here be different if there's more than one buff that you want to track on top of each other. And the size, positioning, etc. All of this you can do exactly as we did before and make it so it fits your UI the best. The question though is what icons are going to be displayed here and you have a little tip here you can config this in the Durate debuff. So let's go there this is a separate tab that you can select from the top. And this is one of the coolest features here is as you can see there's all the raids listed and then we have all the dungeons as well. So you can control which of the debuffs you want to see if you want to turn something off you can find a specific boss for example let's go to the forgotten experiments if you don't want to track something you just unclick the enable button and it's not gonna show up at all. However here you have an option to do some additional stuff. So, for example, the Forgotten Experience in Aberus is a debuff that you want to dispel, but not immediately after it gets some stacks. So, I can do the following. I can add an extra condition here and say uh, glow type. Let's say it's a normal glow. We get a preview here and I can have a glow condition. So, I'm going to say when the stacks are greater than, let's say, 8. So, now this is going to glow only when the stacks are above 8 and I'm gonna see the respective icon as well due to the indicator we saw in the previous section. So this is pretty cool because as you can see all the debuffs are already added for you and you don't have to do anything to track them you can just uh, customize them disable them or add additional conditions but if something is missing you can go to the general section click on create and add the ID of the buff that you want to add and it's gonna get tracked as well. All right, and at the very end, when you're done tweaking the raid stuff, don't forget to go back to layouts. And if you chose that raid to be your solo layout, make sure to change back to whatever you did for dungeons. And all of that is going to automatically change based on the type of content that you are doing. Specifically for dungeons, on top of the preview that you get over here, I can also suggest something else. You can do a very quick queue for the follower dungeons. Doesn't matter which one you pick here, you just say find group, it pops almost immediately. And then once you go inside, you can see how your layout looks like and you can test if some of the icons are positioned correctly, etc. Which is going to be pretty nice to do before you actually go into M plus and the real dungeons. I would totally recommend for you to get the Omni CD, which are those icons for the cooldowns that the different players in the party have. Plus that interrupts uh, list over here if you want to track those as well. The last thing that I'm going to mention is you can go to layouts and you can export each of those layouts. For example, this one that I did for the dungeons, there is an export button over here. If you click it, you can just copy the string. You can save that in case something goes wrong. You can revert back to the changes that you wanted, but you can also send it to somebody else. And I'm going to export this and paste it in the comments below if you want to get this thing that I've built so quickly just for the purposes of this demonstration. And you can do the same for the indicators. For example, those personal debuffs that I created. I can also export this. And here I have the option to select every single indicator that I've created or just the ones that I want to export. Clicking the button gives you another string that you can paste and share with your friends. So at the very end, I'm going to say that I'm very happy with this add-on. It's so easier to work with it compared to some of the other things that I had experience with in the past. It has a lot of options that you can customize, it's very flexible, it's very robust 
and I'm definitely going to use it in the War Within. Yes, there are some minor issues. For example, here I would like to see the mana bar only for the healer. I haven't seen an option to do that or the blinking aggro icon that's shown on the tank. I don't want to see that, but I want to see it on everybody else. It's minor details like that, but those are not definitely deal breakers. Not to mention that the actual UI that I'm experimenting with right now actually uses vertical bars, so they're filling from bottom to top, which is something that I wanted to do long ago with Voodoo, but it just didn't work there. So hopefully this video helps you guys to build your dream UI and make it even better and more flexible for the war within. Let me know how that goes in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Now get out of here.